The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Hello and welcome to Health for a Lifetime. I'm your host Don McIntosh and today we're going to be talking about a subject that really is impacting America and the Western world in a large way. That being the problem of weight gain, obesity. And it's just been skyrocketing in this nation and, and around the world really. Talking with us about this is someone who spends a lot of time talking with a lot of people about this, Dr. George Guthrie. Dr. Guthrie is a physician from the Lifestyle Center of America in Oklahoma. And he, he spends a lot of time in educating people that are attempting to, what would you say, doctor, gain the victory over the bulbs. <laughs> okay. And you've been a physician now uh, uh, in private practice about 14 years. Mm -hmm. You've also done a lot of education with medical students and have a uh, you know, certification in nutrition and mm -hmm. master's in public mm -hmm. health as well. Uh, there at the Lifestyle Center of America, uh, do, you, do, do a lot of the people that come to your program, do they struggle with obesity, with uh, overweight? It seems that most of them struggle with weight. Overweight, obesity, is a part of many, associated with many other significant disease processes, including heart disease, hypertension, and diabetes. Uh, recently in the news and uh, looking at trends around this nation, around the world, there's a real concern that people that are overweight are getting younger and younger and younger. <laughs> I would guess overweight people are getting older and older, but the overweight is happening younger and younger. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a better way to say <laughs> okay. it. That's right. Yeah, so this, this problem starts out when we're, when we're it, it seems as though when, when we're younger now in this nation. Um, well, let's talk about that today. And I know that a lot of our viewers will, will be interested in it. Let's talk about uh, weight loss. Uh, what can you tell me about this? I know sometimes you have a little story where you, yeah. where you build it around a couple of people. Let's talk about two individuals. All right. Uh, Abe and Bill. All right. Okay. Abe and Bill. Abe and Bill. Uh, Abe and Bill are built about the same. They're both large. How old are they? Uh, I, let's say it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. It doesn't I mean, matter. aim for 50s. That's fine. Uh, they're 50% fat and 50% what we call lean body mass. They both are? They both are. Okay. Lean body mass is, in essence, the stuff that's not fat. All right. So we have the, uh, uh, they're really overweight, well, obese. They both need to go lose some weight. I was going to say on a diet. Well, they both need to lose weight. Abe decides to lose weight with a crash diet. Okay. Now, you've probably heard of crash diets. There's all kinds of them out there from grapefruit to, I mean, it just goes on and on. Mm -hmm. Very low calorie and the weight, Abe wants to lose weight. He goes on this crash diet and he loses in one month's time a significant amount of weight, maybe 20 pounds. That's pretty good. Now, Bill, on the other hand, decides he's going to lose weight, but he, uh, goes on a plant-based diet. Okay. Regular exercise, he doesn't limit the amount of food, but he is, he is eating actually uh, fewer calories while exercising. And he loses, over this month's time, a total of seven pounds. Doesn't sound like he's doing as, as, as well as Abe. It doesn't look that way at all. Now, if we could go back to that graphic for just a minute, the, the same one, you will notice that in the top, the light blue, for mm -hmm. Abe and Bill, you will, uh, that's supposed to represent, in essence, their fat mass. And you can see when they start, they both need to lose it. The dark blue is to represent their lean body mass. Okay. When Abe went on his crash diet, please notice that there is a decrease in his lean body mass, whereas Bill, on his plant-based diet, actually has his lean body mass staying about the same. Mm, so the significance of that is? 
The significance is that after the crash diet, Abe has lost an equal amount of fat and muscle. Mm. Because when you go on a crash diet, you tend to lose equal amounts of each. There's less muscle in Abe after he's finished his crash diet. With less muscle, he's more likely to gain that weight back. Okay, so this uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of false to say, well, I'm going to judge a weight loss program on the amount of pounds that's lost. It's more what's actually happening. Exactly. The scales can lie to us. What really matters is how much of the fat has been lost. Now, when we started, you said they both have 50% fat. Sure. 50%. I mean, that was a simple number. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, uh, wh what is it that, that defines whether or not someone's overweight or obese? What's the, you know, what's the rough estimate? Oh, there's a calculation that we use. It's actually called the body mass index. Okay. It, the weight in kilograms divided by the meters squared, you're going to get lost. Okay. And if it's over <laughs> 25, you're overweight. And if okay. it gets up above 50, you're really in trouble. So you, you could, that's the kind of stuff you could figure out easily. Your that's doctor right. could do that for you or mm -hmm. someone else could mm -hmm. do that for you. Okay, so, uh, so then this, uh, the crash diet is not the way uh, to go. Uh, would would, would uh, one of these crash diets, would you consider, for instance, these high-protein diets like the Atkins diet or something like that? Is that a crash diet? Uh, I think it is. It induces in the body, in essence, a starvation state. And uh, in essence, in the starvation state, we, uh, people tend to lose the muscle as well as the fat. Now, this is important because muscle burns between 35 and 50 calories a day just sitting there. Whereas uh, fat burns only two to three calories per day just sitting there. So when you get rid of your lean muscle mass, then you're really not doing yourself a favor because that's what's really burning out the rest of the fat. That was burning the calories in the background. So what happens is when people finish their diet, you can't continue a diet forever. The low, even the uh, low-carb, high-protein, high-fat diets, there's not something you maintain for a long time. When you go off the diet, there's less muscle there. So if you go back to eating the way you were, that actually makes you gain weight. And you may very well end up, as Abe did, a month after his diet ended, weighing more than he weighed when he started, before he went on the diet. Okay, so I, I mean, it's obvious to me then that you believe the best way to lose weight is not one of these crash diets. Right. Are there, uh, I mean, I know there's a lot of people interested in high-protein diets, mm -hmm. so I don't mind. Do you mind if I ask you another question about it right now? Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, the question I have is, are there other hazards besides this with a high-protein diet? Okay. Uh, let's spend a little time talking about it. I think Dr. Atkins' name is the one that comes up the most uh, right. often with this. Dr. Atkins recognized that the problem, or much of the problem with weight gain in, our, in the country resulted from increasing insulin levels. Mm -hmm. Insulin tends to make our body store the energy, tends to make us gain weight. Now, insulin is stimulated in the body when we eat sugars, carbohydrates. Uh, these sugars go in, they stimulate the insulin, and that tends to make the weight go up. So he thought, what we need to do is lower the insulin levels, get them really low, and then it'll be easier to lose weight. And indeed, it works. People who go on the Atkins diet lose weight. He also discovered and has documented that it lowers the cholesterol as well. It does work for that because it's so tied in with the insulin levels. The problem is... You can't live with it forever that way. It induces a starvation state. Many people feel nauseous and uncomfortable when they're on the diet, although some people don't have that problem. And on that diet, you have to ignore a plethora of scientific information documenting that high meat, high fat, animal protein tend to increase cancers and heart disease. When you look at the original diet in the Bible, would it be a low carbohydrate diet or a high carbohydrate? It would be a high carbohydrate diet. What I recommend and what we do at Lifestyle Center of America is to put people on a diet that lowers the insulin but is a high carbohydrate diet. 
Now that almost sounds like an impossibility to some people. Mm -hmm. A high carbohydrate diet, the carbohydrate should stimulate the insulin. But if we use foods that are that let the sugar go or the energy go into the blood slowly, it doesn't stimulate as much insulin. High fiber foods tend to slow that down. There's lower insulin levels. People are not hungry. They tell us, I've never eaten so much in my life and I'm losing weight. Mm -hmm. So that would be a much safer way to do it. So what are some high, uh, high carbohydrate foods that are positive? Maybe they're complex or whatever, you know, they're really dense. What are some of the things that people should be eating if they want to lose weight the good way? Uh, if, if we think about the uh, nutritional pyramid that mm -hmm. the government has recommended for us, that bottom uh, level is in essence what's sometimes called complex carbohydrates. More than just starches, these should be carbohydrates that are mixed in with the uh, food as the way God made it. For example, oatmeal or uh, seven grain cereal or 100% whole wheat bread. They're foods that have a lot of the fiber and are not uh, processed a lot should make the bottom of the pyramid. And of course, when we get to the second lever, level where we start talking about fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. better to have uh, fruit, for example, than fruit juice. It ends up being processed. The sugar goes in more quickly. If it's juice. So just keep it as grown if possible. Better. Apple instead of apple juice. I like this one. The fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the fruit. So help me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so these are, the, these are the foods, and we actually can eat more of those when we're losing weight. Exactly. Exactly. And that's how Bill won out. You okay. see, when Bill finished his crash diet, he may have only lost his, not his crash diet, his <laughs> plant-based diet with exercise, I mean the lifestyle change, he only lost seven pounds. seven pounds, but he maintained his muscle mass, so his fat loss during that time was about the same as, as Abe's. Now, uh, if Bill continues with that lifestyle, he will continue to lose weight, and a long, slow, gradual weight loss is a much safer way to do it than a rapid weight loss. Have you ever struggled with weight? I have. Yes, when I grew up, I was kind of that short, fat kid, <laughs> and uh, always had trouble. I remember, <laughs> Don, I, I don't even like that word fat, okay? Yeah. I, I was, I remember in the, being in the swimming pool once, you know how kids, they'll jump off the diving board, up the ladder, and back around again? I right. was doing that. I got to the ladder about the same time as another kid. I was a little bigger. I elbowed him out of the way, and as I went up the ladder, the kid shot out at me. Uh, a dart went right to my heart. He said, fat lump. <laughs> That's what he called you? That's what he called me. Now, this really made me feel bad, you know, yeah. and I, I really didn't make it around to the diving board again. I went to my father and cried. He called me fat lump. <laughs> so there's yeah. kind of an emotional thing. I, sure. I, there's another word that might be better. What is Do it? you mind? No. I, I like fluff. Fluff? Okay. If he would have called you fluff lump, you would have been No, okay. I don't think that would work. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I sometimes call this stuff by a, a different word. Uh, we, Abe and Bill were both fluffy. Now that so sounds so you struggled with this and, uh, and through your life and... and and is, uh, you're kind of sharing your personal testimony today, too, about there is, a, there mm -hmm. is hope. Mm -hmm. There is hope, and I have found a way to manage it and keep ahead. I'd actually like to get to that in the second half of our discussion. Great. We're talking with Dr. George Guthrie. We're talking about overweight. We're talking about fluff. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to be talking about practical ways to address the battle of the bulge, if you will. So we hope that you join us when we come back. Have you found yourself wishing that you could shed a few pounds? Have you been on a diet for most of your life, but not found anything that will really keep the weight off? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then we have a solution for you that works. Dr. Hans Deal and Dr. Eileen Luddington have written a marvelous booklet called Reversing Obesity Naturally, and we'd like to send it to you free of charge. Here's a medically sound approach successfully used by thousands who are able to eat more and lose weight permanently without feeling guilty or hungry through lifestyle medicine. Dr. Deal and Dr. Luddington have been featured on 3ABM, and in this booklet, they present a sensible approach to eating, nutrition, and lifestyle changes that can help you prevent heart disease, diabetes, and even cancer. Call or write today for your free copy of Reversing Obesity Naturally, and you could be on your way to a healthier, happier you. It's absolutely free of charge. So call or write today. Welcome back. 
uh, we are talking with Dr. George Guthrie of the Lifestyle Center of America today. We're talking about overweight, obesity. We're talking about this huge problem that many people in America have. And we've learned from Dr. Guthrie, who spends much time training people, helping people with this at the Lifestyle Center of America in Oklahoma. We've learned that uh, there is hope, there is help for those that are struggling with overweight. Um, <laughs> let's summarize a little bit. Can you summarize what we've learned so far? And then let's go for, uh, forward. It's best not to lose weight real fast. If you lose weight fast with a crash diet, you're very likely to lose muscle mass, and this leaves you worse off than you were before. Don, I don't think we mentioned this in the first half. It might be worth mentioning here. People often lose a lot of weight and then gain it right back, mm -hmm. and it's up and down and up like and a down. Yo -yo. A yo-yo right. sort of effect. We know scientifically that this kind of living is actually worse off than if you had never lost weight in the first place. I Why like is that? Why is that? Why is that? I don't know that we have all the answers for that, but I think it's the loss of muscle mass. Mm. We, we call that, and, uh, jokingly, the rhythm method of girth control. Okay. Uh, and I like to say it doesn't work either. It doesn't work either, <laughs> so it really can be damaging to you. Someone once told me that the reason for that is because it messes up your metabolism, too. Sure. It's really putting a stress on the body. Um, as we were as we we're finishing uh, last time, you were kind of sharing a little bit of your your personal testimony, mm -hmm. and uh, you know struggling with that. And you said you you didn't like the word fat. I thought about that too in the break. I thought you know there is another uh, acronym that can be used that's positive using F A T, and that's faithful, available, and teachable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know w we want to be faithful, available, and teachable in this half. We mm -hmm. want to learn what you have to teach us. Lots of people when they're dealing with weight and they're dealing with uh, overcoming that, mm -hmm. they, they start counting calories and yes. different things. There's a place called Weight Watchers and different types of things where they really focus on mm -hmm. calories. Mm -hmm. How important really are calories? Well, maybe it's a, a better question is what are calories? What are they? Yeah. Calories are simply a measure of the amount of energy that's in the food. So as we eat our food, we take those, in essence, that energy and we measure it as calories. And our bodies either store it or use it depending on whether we need it or whether we don't need it. If we don't need it, it's more likely, of course, to be stored. The, the foundation of weight loss is to decrease the number of calories that we're actually taking in. Mm, so that's the foundation. So are all calories the same? Uh, excellent question. I've been told that, but I've seen some scientific evidence that some calories are actually handled differently in our body. And you know, our listeners, our viewers may be helped by uh, maybe a perusal of some of the principles, why some calories are maybe a little more damaging than others as far as the weight is concerned. Now, when we talk about all calories being equal, I think we have a graphic about this as well. Uh, you get calories in every kind of food, right? That's right. Like fat. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about fat and okay. fat absorption. What are the calories there? Fat is absorbed differently than carbohydrate. All right. Uh, fat goes, of course, down into the stomach, it goes to the small intestine and it's absorbed. Instead of going to the liver, which is Grand Central Station for managing food, that's where carbohydrates and proteins go, it actually goes up behind the heart in something called the lymphatics and dumps into the blood just before it enters the heart. That's because it's so dangerous, you told me before, uh, to it just to go to the liver, it might clog it all up. These are big globules. Oh, they I can see. plug things up. So it gets mixed in with the most amount of blood. It goes out to the periphery of the body until it gets stuck in a blood vessel out there. And then it starts to let the fat go. Now, fat calories are not what the body prefers to burn. If there are carbohydrate calories around, it will take the carbohydrate calories first. Carbohydrate sugars and starches, in essence, what we're talking about. Those are the calories that the body prefers. And it doesn't really go after those fat or fluff calories until it's finished with the carbohydrates. It's helped me as I look at the food I eat to recognize that foods that are high in fat actually take the energy in and store it where I don't want it. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm finished with the other uh, food that I've eaten for energy, then the body will finally go looking for the fat to use as energy. 
Mm. And, then it, and, and then it does store it. Those globules actually get in. The globules will be pulled out of storage and burned when the carbohydrates are gone. Well, talk to me then about, uh, so the fat things then, basically to summarize, they, those calories are stored later and they are the type, wait. Fat calories are stored first. First. And then pulled out only after the other is gone. I so see, if you okay. eat carbohydrates, especially if they're, they don't stimulate a lot of insulin production, as in the high fiber foods that we talked mm -hmm. about before, foods as grown, those carbohydrates will be used up first and then the body will turn to the fat. So any fat I use goes into storage first. Uh, next thing on our graphic yeah. is carbohydrates mm -hmm. and uh, then it talks about fructose and glucose. Yes, that's a, a good uh, thing to, to look at. Sugars, uh, are, our carbohydrates are handled differently in our body as well. And the reason I note this one is there's an awful lot of for example, high fructose corn syrup used in baking in goods. You see, fructose is about one and a half times sweeter than regular table sugar. So the uh, people who are manufacturing the food can put in the fructose, get the same amount of sweetness, and it doesn't cost as much. Large amounts of fructose, <laughs> excess calories, the body can turn into fat. It's really harder significantly more difficult for the body to turn glucose into fat than it is to turn fructose into fat. There are a couple of steps in between that make it difficult. So when you look on something that says fructose, that's something if you're losing weight you probably want to avoid. Well certainly, high, especially when there's a lot of fructose, you recognize the name fructose, it sounds like fruit, and in mm -hmm. essence that's where we found it first, in the fruit. And the small amounts that are in fruit are not a problem, but when we concentrate it and put it in our bakery goods or our sodas, we're actually taking a carbohydrate that is much more easily turned into fat for storage. Now, interesting studies, at least this is what they taught me in my educational program. If they put an IV in and give you glucose, mm -hmm. they might have to give you up to 5,000 calories a day to get the body to actually turn that into fat. So it's, uh, it doesn't, it's not as easily turned into Exactly. That. So again, do you, uh, you say the foundation of weight loss is, is calories, but right. do you recommend then counting calories or should, is it just very simple to just again, eat food just grown? Counting calories can sure be frustrating, isn't it? Or, or can it? Uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of people who don't like to count calories mm -hmm. and an easier way to do it is in essence move to whole foods. Uh, foods as grown. Uh, on, on the graphic as well, we, we notice glycemic index. What's that? Glycemic index has to do with how fast the sugar actually goes into the body. And uh, it's a measure of the speed. The faster it goes in, the more insulin is going to be stimulated. Insulin tends to make weight go up. If we can keep the insulin levels down, we're less likely to gain weight just from the hormonal milieu. So foods that are low in glycemic index put the energy in slower, less insulin, less likely to gain weight. Well, let me guess. Oatmeal would be slow, white bread would be fast. And that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and why is white bread so fast? I mean, someone told me that it's more rapid, uh, rapidly, I mean, it increases that scale mm -hmm, faster mm -hmm. than almost anything else. Why is that? Well, it's uh, made of uh, sugars that are attached together. If you get it in the wheat, it's all packaged with fiber around it and it's hard to get apart. You kind of have to chew it apart. If they uh, refine it and take the fiber off and then uh, grind it up and then bake it, they've actually gone a significant distance towards breaking those things, the, the chains of sugars into simple sugars. And they absorb, it's broken down quickly from there and, and uh, makes the blood sugar go up fast. So they've chewed your food and everything for you basically when exactly. you get white bread. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. Uh, anything else that we need to know about glycemic index? Are you suggesting we have a little chart that we carry around or is it just good to take a look at one? Well, let's just recognize that okay. the principle that the closer you get the food to the way God made it, in general, the less processing, the uh, lower the glycemic index and the less likely it will be to make the insulin go up and increase your weight. What about fiber? 
fiber. Fiber kind of goes along with glycemic index. Uh, fiber is a, a, a part of the food as grown that tends to slow down the sugar going into the uh, body. This helps to decrease the insulin levels, and I suppose I put it in the same category as uh, the glycemic index, except we can also note that fiber has no calories, you see. By mm -hmm. definition, you put it in here and it comes out there. So uh, you can eat all the fiber you want and not gain weight with that. So fiber foods fill you up without giving you calories. Can you get, uh, where do you get fiber again? What kind of foods? <laughs> foods is grown? Generally, the best place to get it is foods that is grown. We all know that in our world today, we can buy fiber products. Mm -hmm. It makes most sense to me to get it with the food as grown. Meal timing. Oh, Don, this is one of my favorites. Uh, if you were getting on an airplane to fly from here to Honolulu, would you want me to, or want to put the fuel in the plane here or after you got to Honolulu? I'd like to have it here. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yes. If we consider ourselves as airplanes, when we come to the day, uh, it's better to put the fuel in in the first part of the day rather than the end. If you eat a large meal at night just before you lay down to sleep, mm -hmm. it's very likely that your body's going to store that. Some st interesting studies have been done by a Dr. Hallberg where he gave people 2,000 calorie diet either the morning or the evening and then had them switch. The same meal given morning or evening, if it was given in the morning, people lost weight. Not so in the evening. So meal timing is important. One thing I didn't notice on your list, what about exercise and weight loss? Uh, I mentioned exercise as something that Bill did. Okay. Exercise burns calories. Exercise builds muscle. If you have more muscle, you burn more calories while you're sleeping. What's the best time to exercise? Oh, my. I think any exercise is good. Uh, in the morning would be good. In the evening would be good. I think just increasing your muscle mass is probably the most important thing. A lot of people out there have struggled with the crash diets. Maybe they've even tried a healthy option. Maybe they've tried Bill's model instead of the, you know, the crash diet mm -hmm. approach, but they're struggling. What kind of hope can you give them as someone who's been there and has helped a lot of people? I've helped a lot of people, and when we deal with the glycemic index and lower the insulin levels, d increase the exercise in a safe and effective way, I haven't seen anybody that hasn't been able to lose weight unless they really can't exercise because of joint problems. So for most people, those who can get up and move, there's a lot of hope. We've been talking with Dr. George Guthrie. He's a physician at the Lifestyle Center of America in Oklahoma. They have developed many programs there to help people at their facility. They've also developed programs for your local community as well. We're glad that he could join us here on Health for a Lifetime at 3ABN. And certainly when we, uh, when we talk about something that is, is affecting so many of us, this is a very practical program. You can get a copy of this if you call into 3ABN. We hope that today's information has been helpful to you, and that as a result, you'll have health that lasts for a lifetime.